Hey guys, The Real Gaffer here. Thank you for joining me again. It's been a little while since I've made one of these videos and I've learned a huge amount about the game since, uh, since my previous videos. Some of them make me cringe a little bit now. But anyway, I'm going to be talking about the Gunslinger today as it's the, the latest class that Tripwire have brought out for Killing Floor 2. Okay, so the Gunslinger's been out for a little while now. Um, I've got plenty of hours in with him, I think I'm level 18 now, so I'm going to be coming from slightly less of a basic standpoint, but I feel like I'm going to be a bit more informed and I'm going to be able to give more advice to um, a beginner player for the Gunslinger. Now the Gunslinger, in all intents and purposes, is effectively the headshot class at the moment in Killing Floor 2. There is going to be the sharpshooter as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure the sharpshooter is coming for Killing Floor 2. And for Killing Floor 1, the sharpshooter obviously was the headshot class. Um, but yeah, at the moment, uh, in the current state of the game of Killing Floor 2, the Gunslinger is the headshot class. He's got uh, hard-hitting uh, ballistic weapons, fairly good rate of fire, and he has perks centered around headshotting. Now, a quick overview of the passives for the Gunslinger. Um, he gets more, basically, Gunslinger damage, so that's that's pretty standard. One of the key strengths that he does have, though, is uh, movement speed. Movement speed is incredibly important in the game at the moment. What movement speed effectively allows you to do is avoid so many more attacks, and you're going to find when you're playing with the Gunslinger, if you're surrounded, if you're in trouble, you can basically just hightail it out of there and get away from trouble. I mean, generally speaking, when you're playing the game, that's that's what most of the classes are going to do when everything gets a bit hectic you kind of want to all funnel down one route and get away from the bad guys but obviously when you've got that movement speed you can get out of trouble a lot quicker and you can kite the big enemies a lot better so you can keep away from scrakes raging swinging chainsaw arm and you can keep away from the flesh bounds i think the game has seems to have this weird mechanic where enemies kind of teleport to you to make sure that you can't do that all the time but you're still going to find a lot of the time that you can escape from sticky situations by basically running away with that extra movement speed. Um, the other passives that the Gunslinger has is a, it has bullet resistance, and that's fairly useless considering the only enemies that use bullets are the bosses. Um, and when they're shooting at you, they're not particularly doing much damage anyway. So yeah, it's kind of a... no one really cares about that one. The key one is damage and movement speed. Alright, so over to the skills, uh, just a quick overview, um, shoot and scoot is fairly pointless at level 5, so I always go for quick draw, being able to switch weapons is, is far more useful, and I go into that in detail in a moment, a little bit later in the video. Um, at level 10, you've got rack em up and bone breaker, now this is up to you. If you consider yourself a solid headshotter, then by all means go for rack em up, if you can continuously land headshots, you can potentially get a 70% damage increase, which is which is you know, I don't have to explain how massive that is, 70%. Um, so, yeah, by all means, if you're if you're a good headshotter, go for Rack'em Up. I go for Bone Breaker, personally, because that 20% boost is really handy. And, you know, if, if you're running up behind a scrape that's attacking your teammates, that kind of stuff, you're not going to be able to hit, hit him in the head that much. Um, I mean... To be fair, obviously you want to be hitting everything in the head all the time, but that's not always going to be the case. So, I mean, it's up to you. If you think you've got the skill, you know, go for rack em up. But I know that I'm not the best headshotter and I don't have the best PC rig, to be fair. So when I'm losing frame rate, I, I can't always, you know, consistently get headshots. So I just go for bone breaker. 20% increase is substantial. That applies to the regular pistol that you start off with as well. So you'll find that you'll be able to one-shot the smaller Zeds in the head with the regular pistol in hard difficulty and up with that 20% boost along with the passive boost that you get from the Gunslinger anyway. Um, level 15 speed loader I go for over penetration. Generally you're not lining up enemies so I don't see the point in penetration. That's more of the support class's kind of speciality. Uh, if you want to go for penetration it's up to you but speed loader reloading quickly is really handy especially when you've got so many guns that the gunslinger can hold being able to reload them quickly is pretty bloody essential um a level 20 which i haven't re reached yet um but it's pretty much a choice between stumbling from midsection shots or stumbling from leg shots um i would personally just go for the center mass one go for the body shots i mean if you're aiming for the head and you miss the head you'll hit the body and and you can utilize the stumbling there um, 
I haven't tested this out yet though, so I don't know how useful the leg shots potentially are. I mean, the medic can do leg shots to stumble, so I feel like it should be the medic's job, so center mass seems like a more useful uh, option in my mind. Uh, and then at level 25, um, Fanfire and Uber Ammo. I feel like Uber Ammo is going to be the mo more useful one here when the game goes into Z time to be able to just switch over to the 500 Magnums and just absolutely let rip and just keep shooting until Z time ends. You'll be able to pretty much wreck through everything. Cool, with skills out of the way, there's going to be a couple of techniques uh, I just want to tell you about now that you're going to want to be constantly utilizing whilst playing the uh, Gunslinger. Um, that is reload cancelling which is kind of an exploit, I guess, in a way, but it's in the game, so you might as well use it. Um, and aiming down sights, uh, two simple things. When ammo, you buy simple. two of any gun, now you can carry the, the starting revolvers. You can carry two of the 1911s, two Desert Eagles, or two 500 Magnums. When you go to aim them, you're going to have this kind of off-center aim, which was the default in Killing Floor 1, and it's what people opted for in this game. Um, if you middle-click, your alternate fire, that's going to switch you over to aiming down sights, or ADS as it's quite often referred to. Basically meaning you're aim down the sight of one of the guns, and the guy's going to be somehow skillful enough to aim the other gun that's kind of off to the left in line with your sight. Basically it's a lot easier to aim because you'll be aiming down a sight. You just have to get used to the fact that the off gun is firing in the same spot as well and you won't be getting the recoil on your primary gun, if that makes sense. So yeah, you want to be firing down sights. I mean, you can you can use the other the choice. of It's completely up to you, basically. But I like to go down the down the sights. It's a lot easier to, to get constant headshots that way. Now, reload cancelling I was talking about. You'll notice that this is a lot more useful when you're carrying two guns. But what you can do is when you start your reload animation, you'll notice that your ammo will fill up after you've loaded pretty much one of the guns. Um, and at that point, you can cancel the reload by either switching to another gun or using your melee bash. And you'll effectively bring the guns up fully loaded, even though you've only loaded, the animation's only played for loading one of them. So you can shorten your reload times quite substantially, especially when you're carrying um, two weapons. So it's something definitely to utilize. Another thing about the melee bash when you're wielding two weapons, you might notice that it is actually a lot quicker, the melee bash, when you're carrying two weapons. So you can swing pretty quick and you'll actually find that it's quite useful just to kill um, trash mobs with uh, the melee bash because you can hit them in the head twice pretty quick. I'd like to make a point on um, Z time as well in the game. When the game goes into Z time slow motion, all of your bullets are going to turn into projectiles instead of hit scan um, when it's the regular game. So bear in mind that even though you can see traces coming out of your gun during during regular time gameplay, the guns are hit scanned. So regardless of how far an enemy is, you don't need to lead your shots. You just need to aim directly at them to, to get the headshot. But when it flips over to, to Z time, everything turns into projectiles and you need to start leading your shots. So it's arguably easier playing in non-Z time when you're playing a gunslinger just because all of your guns are, you know, projectiles um, and they're hit scan when it's not in Z time. So it's something to bear in mind. In terms of picking weapons now, pretty much you're just going to do straight upgrades from pistol to pistol now in the early levels i always picked the 1911 because the the regular pistol wasn't one shotting uh zeds in the head in in hard difficulty um so the 1911 is quite useful in the early levels once you get to about level 10 and you get that extra damage boost from bone breaker you can just use the the m9 the starter pistol to to headshot most of the trash and then you can go straight to using the desert eagle Desert Eagle's pretty powerful, uh, it takes two shots to take out sirens and husks with headshots and it'll, it'll one-shot pretty much everything else in, in the head. Um, it'll also one-shot um, the, the proper trash if you get them with body shots with the Desert Eagle. Um, then you'll upgrade to the 500 Magnum, the 500 Magnum will one-shot pretty much everything in the head apart from the scrakes and flesh pounds. Now, doubling up on these weapons is, is up to you, really. Uh, obviously, doubling up on the weapons means you're going to double your ammo count and you're pretty much going to double your rate of fire. So it's pretty much uh, it's up to you when you want to upgrade because you keep the same ammo pool. So it's a matter of will you be using uh, enough ammo and do you need to put that much damage out quickly on the wave. So in later waves, you're definitely going to want to double up on the the Desert Eagles and the 500 Magnums because you can pretty much just pop away at the big guys to, to kill them really quickly. Now the Gunslinger, 
and this goes with the commander as well because they're both ballistics classes and and the support even um are all very useful against scrakes because scrakes don't have a resistance to ballistics so if you can land headshots on a scrake especially with the 500 magnums if you can pop off all of your 10 shots into a scrake's head you'll kill him by yourself even in a six man with the flesh pounds however this is going to be your main weakness. Flesh Pounds have a resistance to ballistics, which means that you're going to be in a bit of a shitty situation anytime you come up against one. So you're really going to have to rely on your team when it comes to, to meeting a Flesh Pound. By all means, you know, let rip on him with your weapons. Um, if you're using the quick switch weapon, you can just fire off all your 500 Magnum shots. It'll quick switch to your Desert Eagles, fire them all off. Just try and do as much damage as you can. Obviously, aim for the head if you can, because uh, it's quite satisfying, actually, if you can shoot off a Flesh Pound's head and watch and kind of you know it's the scariest enemy in the game and he's just kind of all bumbling about with no head so if you can get the headshots uh, land them but yeah just bear that in mind that you're going to be weak against flesh pounds whereas you're going to be pretty useful against the scrakes um, but anytime you're facing any of these you want to make your team aware that you are going to fight one and make sure that your whole team is working together to take out the big zeds Yep, so that's pretty much all you need to know about the Gunslinger. When it comes to the bosses, that's just straightforward. Just keep shooting them until they die. Uh, Hans does have resistance to ballistics, so you kind of don't want him as your boss, but it's going to happen. Um, I, all I would say is just try and shoot him in the backpack. That does extra damage. If you're fighting the Patriarch, shoot him in his weak arm. His kind of like gay, flappy arm that he has that is, doesn't... The one that basically isn't a minigun. And yeah, that's really sort of all you need to know. So yeah, cool. Well, uh, thank you for watching. Hope this has been informative as always. And uh, have fun shooting things. Finish the last ones off so I can open the trader pod for you. The old man can still shoot.